Just a friendly reminder that the opinions expressed on this show are not worth a Canadian penny, so disregard anything you hear that might get anyone in trouble. And despite some of the great ideas you may hear, don't try them at home. Go to friend's house instead. Everybody, welcome to Slamfire Radio, episode 452 uh, for April 21st, 2021. I'm one of your hosts, Kelly. And I'm the other one, Adriel. <laughs> it's small, it's short, it's sweet. <laughs> That's it. I like it. Yeah. And we didn't Easy. screw it up this month, and I wasn't muted. <laughs> it's pretty good. I'm it's 30 in this. Arizona. Is that Fahrenheit? It's probably Fahrenheit, right? 30 it's Fahrenheit? That. That's not that warm. Yeah, that's cold. Yeah, that's cold. 30 Celsius is freaking hot. I'm just messing around. I can't imagine it's uh, it's 30 Fahrenheit in Arizona. Uh, um, well, now we're going to have to look it up see what it is. Mm. Anyways, so it's only the two of us tonight. Mo's, uh, Mo's away. He's, uh, he's uh, you know, what is Mo doing? Did he give us an excuse this time? He said something about just having raw, unadulterated hatred for the viewers and listeners. Yeah, I heard that last thing. It was underlying. Yeah, something about raw hatred. Yeah, that's all yeah. I heard. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And speaking of which, <laughs> no, um, Kyle, he's off tonight. He's getting a new car or truck. Truck. I was Alberta. Gonna, truck. I was, yeah, it's a oh, truck. Does everybody have trucks in Alberta? Mm, and not everyone. and a horse and a cowboy hat some of us Ask have minivans shops. that cosplay as trucks <laughs> you know what i okay let's talk about what we didn't get this week and i'll tell you about my car my right. suv that is was similar to your your minivan hmm this weekend anyways what we did in guns this week is brought to you the calgary shooting center it's canada's premier firearms retailer we have nothing listed here but i'm sure oh, if you go this and- week they have the 590 a1 in stock uh this sure. is the mossberg that's kind of like a combat shotgun it's the one that's got the little like shell that sits in the stock that you can like pop forward to the chamber if you need to and it is a thousand bucks sweet awesome okay go over there say hi to them wonder how they did on glock days by the way hmm I bet you they sold a Glock or two. I'm, I'm a, yeah, I'm thinking they did. One mm-hmm. or two. Anyways. All right, Adriel, you're up. There's only two of us, so what'd you, mm-hmm. <laughs> what'd you do? Uh, I hit the range. Uh, let's see. I'll I'll show you what I discovered at the range. So okay. last time I went to the range, I brought out this jar, jarred J180. Uh, it's a 180-ish uh, rifle. Advantage yeah. being that it takes a gas tube, so you can change your... Uh, uh, Change your barrel if you need to. And uh, I ran into some problems again. Um, so l- last time I ran into some cycling issues uh, and I ran into some feed issues. And uh, so I oiled, oiled it up. The cycling issues went away. Um, it still doesn't really like steel case, case ammo, it, like, it, it, but it ran the brass stuff just fine. But the other issue I ran into was uh, in mag fit. Uh, so this magazine's in right now. And the problem is some of these magazines are so loose, they just come right out. I need to push right the magazine out. button. The magazine button's no. up here, right? So that it just doesn't fit very tightly with some of them. And uh, and that's really the, uh, the issue I ran across. Um, some of them did fit tightly, like these cross mags fit nice and tight. Oh, sorry. No, they don't. Oh, well, these cross mags don't fit tightly at all. <laughs> uh, this metal mag? Oh, no, 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 trouble is like when you're shooting it, it's, it's violent. It, it moves and stuff. And then the magazine falls down a little bit and then it doesn't feed. Yeah. And, uh, I swear I had some mags that actually locked on it, but I just don't, don't have any next to me right now. So that was, um, that's what was causing me issues was, uh, was magazine fit. Um, also had out the uh, the C seventy one that's uh, Spectre Ballistics uh, ten twenty two receiver. Yep. Um, yeah, that ran fine. Good. It's uh, I like that one. It's got the uh, the rails is a little bit far forward of the uh, of the receiver, so it's uh, what nice we and like. secure on it. Yeah, yeah, it's got, yeah. it's got enough room for the scope. Like on, on a ten twenty two, you really do need like a little bit more. Like 
a couple extra spots ahead of where the the rail is on a typical 1022 in order to get the scope for far forward enough you know this this is uh this is very standard for you um but uh, for everyone else out there uh, it's, it's a common thing with rugers um and then oh yeah, i brought my m1 garand out i brought like three clips i, I brought a uh, my nephew out there and uh, i just brought three clips clips because i'm like ah, he, he won't want to shoot it no, that's the one he liked the most. <laughs> he wanted to shoot the uh, the M1 Garand all the time. Uh, so uh, so we had that out there. Um, Was it your nephew that shot the bunny? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. the M1 Garand is bigger than he is. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was that on the weekend? Was that on the weekend? Yeah. You yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sorry. I um. Yeah, I went out to my parents' place and uh, shot a shot a rabbit out there, and ate it and uh yeah yeah it was good okay does my voice it... sound weird am yeah, i, I just... am i not coming through correctly uh, or am i just like <clears throat> was that the uh was that the rona like seeping through there and uh getting into the microphone you sound good to me but what do Thank i know you. that's all, that's all that matters. <laughs> my books. um yeah. Anyways, yeah, it was it was good to get the M1 Grand out. It's, it's it's been a while since I've shot it, and uh, it's such it's such a soft shooter. You know, you look at the, like metal butt plate, and you're like, oh man, this thing is gonna beat me up. You shoot, you're like, oh no, it's actually it's fantastic. Just shooting surplus 308 ammo, it's so good. Awesome. Uh, I, I love shooting that gun. Every time I pull it out and shoot, it, it's so good. It's somewhere back there. Somewhere back there. Yeah. Somewhere back there. That looks uh, a little different. It's a little bit different, right? So I put in some slot wall. Uh, that's mm-hmm. the white stuff that you see up there. Um, the primary problem I was trying to solve was what to do with magazines. Um, I have a lot of magazines. Uh, I have like uh, a stupid amount of AR mags for some reason. Every time I buy a gun, like it comes with a bunch of AR mags. Every time I sell one, I'm like, um, it comes with one magazine and no one seems to care. And uh, therefore, I have it. I have uh, 28 uh, AR mags and uh, trying to like store those somewhere on a wall is just terrible. So I got a basket for them. That big basket over there can, uh, that works. can fit all kinds of mags in it. Yeah. You're going to uh, do different baskets for different mags? No, I'm just going to stuff them all in there. Heck oh, with I, it. Couldn't, I, I can't do that. No. It's, <laughs> no. I keep my my mags for my competition stuff separate. Uh, I typically okay. put those in. Uh, I have a three gun bin over there that uh, that I take out to the three gun matches, and then I got these guys as well. I want to use that for reloading stuff, though. I don't want to okay. use that for magazine storage. Um, yeah. So uh, the slot wall was from Canadian Tire. I was looking at pegboard and that kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, so like with pegboard, uh, just standard wood pegboard is fine. It uh, it 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 would hold like whatever i need to hold on it it looks it looks a little cheap it looks yeah. a little cheap yeah it looks a little bit like uh uh like a 10 or 20 year old like wood workshop kind of a thing so i could paint it i could paint it black or something like that and i was looking at some metal pegboard and some rails and some other stuff and this i think i, I might just paint it black but i prefer the look of like the track wall um, yeah. just like a little bit cleaner and there's not a bunch of holes on it and uh, it's really quick to uh, to move stuff around on there as well so mm-hmm. uh, that's what I went with there and I, I, I likely won't have like rifles up on there because I need the space and that's what the whole point of getting like this big thing of uh, of rifles and, and whatnot <clears throat> and uh, there's a lot of green screen stuff in there I'll probably I'll probably do that in black though and they use like some LED uh uh, highlight lighting. Paint everything green. This is from Greybridge Solutions. Paint everyone everything green, and that way, when there's a full gun ban, you can green screen your guns into <laughs> rooms and claim the gun is the room is dedicated to a clean house. Uh, wine cellar, I think, is the uh, from from last week. Uh, the the yeah. wine cellar is the uh, actually that's what I should have. I should have a, a, a bottle of wine on the on the rack. <laughs> Multi purpose. <laughs> it's a wine cellar. I thought about it. I had a, a bottle of wine upstairs. I'm like, oh, yeah, I should bring that downstairs and, and put it on the rack, but. I forgot. Um, yeah, so it's it's starting to come together. It's starting to uh, starting to look more like a gun room. Right now, I am working on lighting. Um, I think I need to get my ceiling in first. I think I need to put, get my drop ceiling in and then put the lighting in because I don't know what to, where to put it. I have like nice channels and that kind of thing. I don't know if you guys saw when when you looked here. I'm just I'm literally just stringing it just to test like the the light levels. 
Uh, I can see I need more, but I have more. I have I have, you have lots. Of LED lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, I'm uh, I'm going to use them. I'm going to yeah. use a lot. Those aren't live, by the way, just in case everyone's like. <laughs> 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 those are live. Those are, those are picking out. Uh, well, I got like a, it's a switch to go to the to my main light up here, which is just a string light right now, and I just haven't bothered wiring it up yet. But I'll have to wire it up so that it's like string light is is pretty ghetto. I don't I don't yeah. think I want a string light in here, but uh, it's come along. I've uh, I've been organizing, and uh, <laughs> I really like how the IKEA rack holds all these ammo cans. I do too. It's it looks so- pretty good. It's so tight. It's it's such a good way of uh, of storing like just a crap load of ammo, and uh, in a small space because that's uh, more than a few thousand dollars worth of ammo, yeah. and uh, fits on there just fine. One for ammo, one for gear, one for. Mm-hmm. You should get three of them. Guns reloading. I got my reloading, reloading thing next to me, and then someone on Instagram was recommending the. I I've got uh, like. Uh, commercial grade carpet in here, aka the really thin, like high wear, low cost stuff. And someone's like, "You should put those puzzle tiles in there." I was like, "Oh yeah, I should totally put those puzzle tiles in there because you know those foam like puzzle things like they have in like mm-hmm. kids' uh, play areas and that kind of a thing." Did you not get my picture from Dollarama? Yes. Go to Dollarama, the dollar fifty, and get four of them for a dollar fifty. What? Yeah. Really? Yeah. No, they're and... way, they're, no, that can't be. That can't be right. They're way more expensive than that. No, totally true. Oh, I gotta go to Dollarama because, uh, like, this stuff has no padding to it. It's cold, and like yeah. this room, it's warming up now that I'm in it. But it was uh, 15 and a half degrees when I got in here, and now it's 16 and a half. I'd imagine it'll warm up to like normal temperature after a while, just from yeah. being in here. But uh, puzzle pieces, yeah, yeah, yeah. That Soft. is a really smart idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I like but yeah. it. Yeah, like no, it. I sent it to you because I thought it was really cheap and it was a little bit thicker, and we can use it, cut it up, and use it for cheek risers. Yeah, and that's that's what I thought you were saying, and I, I I still have a bunch of foam left over, but um, I wasn't thinking selfishly enough. What about me? What about my needs? <laughs> 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 so I'll have to, uh, yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to go pick a bunch of those up. Maybe after the show today. Hmm. Super cheap. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. How about you, Kelly? I spent the weekend at the range. Uh, so we on Saturday with the uh, IBC for our instructor boot camp, it stands for, mm. uh, with our Ontario peeps here. And it was good. And one of the reasons that it was good is because of the fact that we were able to shake off all the rust. We all had rust. And it's been a few months since we've done a maple seed. So it was good to try it out. And everybody got to do everything so the next day we had a maple seed at frpc which is my home club here in kingston mm-hmm. and uh, everybody's guess what everybody's points of instruction were really on point they did fantastic with them it was a really really good day um yeah so saturday uh the uh the range or the weather was like 15 16 17 18 19 degrees it was it was quite warm uh so woke up mm-hmm. on sunday morning nice and bright and early and uh we had snow and um <laughs> oh god what the hell is this and no I sympathy said, from the Albertans. i said oh yeah it's maple seed our first maple seed of the year so we had snow <laughs> and it was cold and miserable and then it was windy as can be our canopies flew away everything we staked everything down but because everything was wet from the snow and also from the spring runoff, the ground wasn't really all that solid. And so if you put a stake in it, we put really long stakes in them too, mm-hmm. everything, but uh, it still pulled up with the wind and that. So we had to use cinder blocks and tie everything down. So uh, <laughs> one of the things is that on Saturday, I went to go and get the maple seed trailer. So we have an upgraded one. It's amazing. I love it. It even has the back where you can pull it down and has a ramp and I can stand up and, oh, it's going to be so good towing that around this year. I know, right? But where I have it parked currently, it was uh, so, yeah, there was, it was up to the um, the wheels. It was about six inches above the wheel. So of water I'm talking about because of the, anyways. So I couldn't pull it out. So I had to take everything, take everything out of the trailer, load it into my uh, Tiguan. <laughs> and take to the range so the tiguan became your van essentially it was a maple seed van so 
I had everything that I needed though. It was good. Uh, so Sunday, yes, yeah, as, as I said, it was Maple Shade. Uh, we had a we had a bunch of kids on the line, youth shooters, which nice. they were fantastic. We had so we had two riflemen that were youth shooters. So one of them was mm-hmm. 17 years old. He has never picked up a gun. <laughs> <laughs> He shot a rifleman score, and then, had, <laughs> and then we had a twelve-year-old. And Wes, Wes has been shooting for quite a while. His dad mm-hmm. is Rob Foot, and Rob Foot is a listener. He's actually been on the show as well. He did our goose hunting um, show. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. So Wes is an accomplished shooter. So he came out and shot. He shot a uh, two sixteen, which was fantastic. He also shot a two hundred eight. So he's huh. a really, really good shooter. Anyways. And then we had a couple uh, that were there. And so Tibbins, a relatively new shooter, and she uh, uh, was borrowing Kelly Kincaid's rifle because she actually, uh, she, um, she, yeah, anyways. So she was shooting Kelly's rifle and uh, she got a rifleman score. And then uh, Ryan, her, her partner, was there as well. And he borrowed my rifle. Uh, mm-hmm. And because he didn't have a rifle. Um, so. Yeah, he shot a rifleman score with that too. So a couple and then two you shooters all got rifleman scores. And the people that were there, they were fantastic. They were really good. Um, they were a really good uh, group of people. We had several that were in the 200s to 205 that almost qualified. And then, um, yeah, a lot of there was some issues. There was issues with ammo and a few rifles that uh, just didn't work out right so we had a couple mm-hmm. of loaners on the line other than the ones i just talked about but yeah it was a really fun day great um everybody stayed afterwards to help uh, clean up as well so that was that was really beneficial and it was a quick cleanup too because i pared things down because i had to carry everything into the tiguan but yeah we were up and out of there in record time so it was awesome um, what else? Uh, had another meeting for the she shoot. So I met who her next guest is, and she is fantastic. I'm not going to tell you this. Maybe we will tell you a bit later. But she is sponsored by a Canadian company, and she is a record holder down in the U.S. for the longest shot. So if anybody knows, oh. puts that together, then you know who he is. Anyways, hmm. okay, all right. Um, what else? Oh, I got so much to do, but I don't know. Anyways, we'll catch up later. Uh, why don't we get into uh, upcoming events? So, upcoming events is sponsored by Telus Alpha. It's Can- it, Telus Alpha is a Canadian digital agency that uh, works exclusively with Firearms Vertical. Uh, they help with uh, business processes, strategic planning, websites, e-commerce, and battling the stigma of the industry carries with banks, merchant processors, I'm spitting all over the place, uh, and social media. So go over and check out telusalpha.com. All right. So I was, mm, I updated some of the show notes and I was going to put all the Maple Seed events in here. There's lots. Still, there's we emailed lots. out like a big email with how many events in it? Seven? Yeah. One of them maybe. wrong ish <laughs> yeah the ama is not where it was listed so it's in nova scotia though right it's just outside of halifax slash dartmouth yes but it's not put? where they said it was what anyways it place? was it close was it kind of close i don't know anyways so we're getting that fixed hmm. so nova scotia was released uh we had a couple of events in new brunswick released ontario uh, Alberta, Saskatchewan. Do we? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we had Saskatchewan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And do we have any BC release? None in BC well? yet. But I okay. saw some in there that should be popping soon. Yep. So all kinds of different events that are coming up for Project Maple Seed. Uh, I had one guy. So, uh, anyways, I haven't even responded. He just sent me an email. He says, um, "Yeah, can I? You know, I'd like to give up my Cornwall seat because um, I'm coming from Cape Breton, Cornwall, Ontario. Who's driving 15 hours from Maple Seed?" Anyways, he goes, can I go to the one in, in New Brunswick? I'm going, mm-hmm. you might even want to see one that's going to be a little bit closer. So I'm going to tell him about the ones that are a little closer. So he doesn't have to drive 15 hours. Yeah, Maybe yeah. three or four. Three or four might be doable for him. Well, he's he was willing to drive. He was willing hours. to go 15. I'm sure three or four will be very nice. <laughs> yeah. So Change anyways. of pace. <laughs> um, crazy people only drive 15, 20 hours to go in, or 43. It was 43, that wasn't it? That's how long it took me to get to Alberta. 43 hours. 
I, I have I have not driven across the country or to Texas uh, for uh, for maple seed or apple seed. So uh, correct. I have no idea. The furthest yeah. I've driven is uh, six or seven or something like that. That's not bad. You want to talk about this cl- cabin fever classic that's happening? At I Lockheed? guess I do. Okay. The uh, Cabin Fever Classic is a registered sporting clay match at the Wapiti Shooters Club. It'll be April 29th to May 1st. Go to wapitishootersclub.ca for more info. Busting clays, I guess. Hey, Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have it here. We should probably actually put it in for the next show, but let's talk about it anyways. National Range Day is uh, June 4th. Go on over to National Range Day, I think it's .ca. Uh, you can get some ideas there and how you can actually have a range day, what what types of range days you can have, register it as well, take pictures, and then show the world that Canada is all about shooting. So go over there and check that out and, and register as well. So um, let's move on to the news, shall we? What did you mm-hmm. put in the news here? I haven't read it yet. Well, uh, the big one that uh, that some people are talking about is that the U.S. Army has awarded their uh, their next generation squad weapon uh, to SIG to replace its uh, M4 carbines and the uh, or carbines in American uh, and the M249 saw. Uh, so this is uh, here, let me share my screen just so people can kind of see what this uh, what this looks like. Uh, let's go window. Let's go that thing right there. Boom. There it is. Uh, nice. so they're, they're based off the MCX spear is, I believe is what, uh, what SIGs called them. And, uh, this is what's going to replace the, uh, the M4 now. Okay. Yeah. It looks like a, 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 a M4 with a different name on it, yep. but the big difference is the ammo. Uh, so back in the fifties and sixties, you know, the U S army was, was running like M1 grands and then they ran the, uh, the M14s, and uh, those were both pretty big battle rifles with uh, 308, 20 round box mags. And then after a while, they're like, "Oh man, this is terrible. We should uh, we should get something that's like got a smaller cartridge. It's easier to carry. That's not quite so heavy." And they went with the uh, M16, and and they went with that. <laughs> they're back to a battle rifle. 6.8 by 51 is practically 308, a little bit yeah. uh, smaller of a uh, bullet. Um, they have gone with much higher pressure i don't know if they're if they're going with the maximum but um stupidly high pressures on these things in order to get like a ton of performance out of them um but they're back to big bullets again so if you're like if you're if you're a follower of military things and you like the idea of battle rifles with full or intermediate i don't know if you can call even call 308 intermediate big bullets uh they're doing them they like big bullets, and so they cannot lie. So <laughs> uh, they, they got a they got a big bump on them too on the on, on the back. <laughs> the uh, the base uh, the case head on these things is steel, and then the body is brass. So they use a hybrid case on them. Really? Yeah, which is pretty That's wild. Cool. Yeah, and it allows them to run much higher pressures because their case yeah. head is steel, and it uh, it won't fail. So um, I like the rifle. Yeah, the paint job's cool on it. Uh, I don't oh. think that. Uh, I don't think that uh, the issued weapons will look like that for very long. They'll probably no. <laughs> be all worn out and crappy looking in short mm. order. But uh, yeah, that's uh, imagine the U.S. military can spend money on on their military. Well, equipment. There, there's a little bit of debate around like how soon or if, if even these things will get adopted just because it's like it's like quite a bit of expenses to to, to get these things rolling. And uh performance wise i mean it, it will it will perform better at, at range because they're using like a bigger heavier bullet and they're pushing it to stupid speeds yeah. um but it's going to have mo- a lot more recoil and uh you won't be able to carry as much ammo i don't know well you have matter. you have people that can do that for you you carry the rifle you have somebody else carry a squire them. squire you, you- Squire, it's not a please squire. bring me another five <laughs> magazines. I seem to have used them all. No, no, that's not how it works. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's that six point eight by fifty one. And uh, if you like, there's uh, there's more articles on that cartridge and just the nutso things they're trying to do with it. I think they're. I think I read eighty thousand psi. Crazy, like a ton, a ton of it. The article says they produce less recoil. I say, Bull. That's, how, 
That sounds like some bull. <laughs> Maybe less than 308. Uh, but they're they're trying to get like the same performance as, as a like a 270 short mag would, would get out of it. I can't imagine it's gonna have less recoil than a uh, a five five six. Unless maybe they get it with the with the weight and with the suppressor, I don't know. I don't know how that's supposed to work. Um, and then one that I just noticed here. Um, so Full Thirty sends sends me emails. Full Thirty is a video hosting platform for gun stuff, and I've got some some videos on there. Uh, and I noticed that they are migrating to JUXXI, which is like a more general purpose uh, video hosting website. Mm -hmm. Uh, so they're, they're migrating all their content and I think their creators over to, uh, over to that platform. Uh, hopefully it gets some traffic. We keep hoping that some other platform will get popular other than YouTube. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's not happening. So what other options are there out there for, for us? Oh, there's a bunch of them. So. I got my videos on like almost all of them, and they just don't. I got like a tenth of the views we're not, on those. We're not getting the YouTube. traffic. No, no, not even <laughs> worth it. It's just, yeah. There's Rumble. There's uh, BitChute. Uh, there is some open source thing that's Orly or something like that. Owly. Um, there's a ton. We need Elon to buy YouTube. Yeah, that would be neat, but I think it's going to be too expensive. You could buy Twitter. That's a good place to start. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be I still cool won't use Twitter, but yeah. you know. You won't use fast. Twitter even though yeah. he's no. going to take it over and it's like free speech. The whole platform is just like spouting Accessible. off into the into the, the <laughs> universe and hoping that someone's going to listen to your stuff. I prefer like at least with YouTube or, or what Dialogue. we're doing right now, this is two-way. People are people are responding in, in real time as, as we're talking and we yeah. wrote these podcasts and we get feedback and, and whatnot, so... I think that's, yeah. that's really important to to things. Well, you yeah. also have to have the ability to have the feedback and have the conversations as well. Yeah, I, I guess you still can on Twitter. It's just it's just not built like it's not built well for that stuff on it. So I'm no, I know, no. And I don't. No. I, I really don't like the user base. So I don't really see the point. <laughs> All right, that's what we. Uh, that's it for the news. I don't have anything else in there. Um, yeah. yeah. I have been listening to the podcast for a uh, nighttime podcast. You should go over there and have a look, have a listen to it. There was a, this week's episode was all about the, uh, uh, the shooting in uh, Nova Scotia. So there's a new book out on that as well. So go and have a listen to that. I threw it in the news. I was just talking about it. I didn't really listen to it. I didn't list it, but I've been listening to it. So it's got some great information on there about uh, what was happening, obviously with the RCMP and everything. Yeah. Anyways. Okay. Let's get into legal gun uh, legal CCFR legal fund donations. I can talk now. Um, go on over to the CCFR, help them out because they are helping us out with an upcoming court battle that's still taking place. Uh, right now it's now more important than ever to go over and become a member or to donate to the legal challenge fund. You can send an EMT to finance at firearmsrights.ca or become a member. Hey, guess what? Chicken butt? Yes. Mm -hmm. No, I just sent in the paperwork for us to become a, um, not business members. We're switching to club range members. So Maple Seed sent it in last night. Oh, yep. Yep. Neat. Yep. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, New Gun Stuff. New Gun Stuff is uh, brought to you by Bolt Action Coffee. Slam Fire Radio is a brand ambassador for Bolt Action Coffee. The coffee is some of the best coffee you can ever get your little hands on. So... Uh, go on over to uh, boltactioncoffee.com and give a discount code of SLAMFIRE, all capitals, all one word, and, and then you'll get it sent straight to your little house. And you can agree with us and we'll have coffee in the morning and you can send me pictures. Okay, so new gun stuff. I got some stuff here. So, um, stuff? yeah, there's a couple things that are hap that, that's uh, happening. One of the, the Bren 2s, uh, I believe there was some pricing announced for the restricted versions of those. They're expensive. They're like 2800 bucks um coming soon uh north silver will be bringing those in i run guns has gray market ones if you want them right now but again they're restricted um so they're expecting the non-restricted one to come in uh right around september october kind of a thing so oh. end of the year end of the year for that okay 
Um, which uh, uh, that's, you know, that'll be an interesting entrant. Um, I believe I, I, I took a look at some reviews on the um, uh, BNT APC 223, which is that Swiss one. And uh, the accuracy is not as good as you would expect for a, uh, uh, for a Swiss rifle. Um, reliability is as good as, as far as I, I know, but uh, accuracy but there's is not there. That. Uh, well, it's like a, an inch and a half, which, um, I don't know if you should expect more than that, but for the price, I think you should. I mean, if you had, if you, if you spent three grand on an AR on an, on air parts, it would be pretty accurate. I think you mm. could get like a pretty Gucci barrel. You could probably get it to one MOA and hold one MOA. And, uh, I don't know that, that I think that would be interesting. Um, there's a couple of other things that got announced that, uh, I don't know if they're super interesting or not. Like uh, North uh, Iron Guns was announcing the PSA AR uh, V, which is like a nine millimeter PCC that uh, uh, that's possible to bring in. But uh, uh, I don't think that's relevant for us. And yeah, didn't really notice anything else that was uh, that was too interesting. Okay, I'm typing to you in the private chat. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah. Uh, I will. I mean, you want me to like. Take it, take over. No, no. Okay. No. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anyways, that's it. That's all. See you. That's all for the gun stuff. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for that. Uh, so, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get into the main topic. And I thought up this topic on the fly because you know what? We didn't have a main topic, but I was thinking about it. I got a message just before I left work tonight. And mm-hmm. it was from, do you remember I was telling you about the um, people that bid on the United Way range day package yeah. and all yeah. that? Anyways, so she had a fantastic time. She wanted to know all the guns that she shot and she wanted to know specifics about them. And then sent I sent her all the pictures and everything so she could brag about what she was shooting. Anyways, mm-hmm. so she got back to me today and she said that a friend of hers is uh, saw the pictures and heard all about what, what she did. And uh, she says, I know that I, you know, you took me because it was a charity and I bid on it. But she said, how much would it cost for one guy to go to the range and do everything that I did? And I went, this is a dilemma because normally I'll take people to the range for free, but I cheap, cheap spent 350 bucks to go to the range. <laughs> so what do I say? So I thought for the main topic tonight, people taking people to the range, what are your expectations, especially with the prices of uh, fire or ammunition? Ammo. now? What? Yeah. Ammo. Uh, I was, I was yeah. thinking the same thing. I, um, I took my nephew out and uh, I got him to shoot the cheap stuff mostly. Yeah. My twos. Well, yeah. that's it. Right. So, but if we have somebody, so if somebody approaches you and, and would like you to take them to the range, like for example, this weekend I had uh, booked a, uh, a friend of mine was getting married and I, she said, I'd love to go to the range as part of, you know, a get together for the ladies. Uh, and I said, okay, let's, let's book the weekend. I'll take you on Saturday and the group of ladies that are here that are part of your, um, inner circle. And we'll go and do like, a instead of, you know, a stay gad, we'll go and shoot guns anyways. So she actually can't make it this weekend. We'll reschedule again, but I was willing to provide all the firearms targets, et cetera, as well as the ammo for free for this, because it's a friend of mine and I just want, they've been talking about wanting to go to the range and typically that's what will happen if somebody you know if somebody actually contacts me i'll say okay uh i'll take you um just mm-hmm. show up at this time i give them a whole list of stuff be prepared for the weather dress appropriately if you have eyes and ears uh bring those if you don't you need to tell me so i'll supply them i supply the targets i supply the guns i supply the ammo and when we're talking about like larger caliber ammo uh i limited it to so when i did the um the uh pgw uh, the m15 Mm -hmm. i only allowed the people that i took last weekend or the weekend before i only allowed three rounds per person because it's 6.5 you know it's oh yeah right Mm -hmm. so i'm not giving them a whole you know 20 rounds to shoot down range of that obviously so especially if it's on my dime so What's the expectations? What do you have? And people that are watching, listening, what is your expectations of taking people to the range? Mill like, serp. 
Millsurp ammo. Hmm, 22s, Millsurp. Oh, yeah, you want to shoot? No, I'm bringing SKS. I'll bring my Mosin. That'll beat you up. You won't want to shoot <laughs> still after that. Um, before when when 223 was a little bit cheaper, maybe like a mag or two of uh, of 223. Um, I'm trying to think of like what else is on the wall there. Oh, yeah, a box of shot shells if they're game for it. Yeah, shot shells and clays is a great way to, to kill like an hour or two. Yep, and uh, uh, is it pretty inexpensive? A box of yeah, what does a box of clays go for these days? 20 bucks. Uh, I haven't bought one in a while. And the last Neither box of clays I. that I bought, I took out to Kells and we've been using them for our target practice. So uh, there was some on the range uh, this weekend or the last mm-hmm. weekend. And I put them in the uh, up on the berm. And uh, yeah, I, we had a couple of, sh- oh. you know, 12, a couple of boxes mm-hmm. of 12 gauge and a couple of boxes of 28. I know. <laughs> 28? No. 12. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> This is the gun. <laughs> no, I wanted them to be able to try everything. The only thing that I didn't bring was a Milserp. I wish I had. So I love um, taking the SKS out for that because the ammo's cheap. I bought my SKS ammo when it was like 26 cents around and it's all corrosive. And yeah, yeah, if you want to shoot like three, four clips of that stuff, go and go nuts. It's not going to be because yeah. like you're, you're, I think one of the things you're identifying is just like how much cost you're incurring by uh, uh, by letting them shoot all this ammo. And yeah, uh, yeah it, it can add up. So I, I, I do prefer to, to kind of push them towards the more inexpensive ammo stuff. I don't want them shooting right. like 338 Lapua or big stuff and just ripping rounds off, especially they're just making noise a lot of the time. Right. So, yeah. well, with people, I wanted to give them a good breath, especially the people that I brought out for the United Way. Like they're they're paying quite a bit. So I'm going to give them, you know, everything. Um, but uh, I do make them aware of like these are people that just got their pal our pals and mm-hmm. the two couples that I, I took out a couple of weekends ago. Um, I made them aware of the fact that shooting's not a cheap sport and the you know the prices right now for ammo you have to factor that into as well as what you do want to shoot. So nine millimeter, twenty two. Uh, so Grey Birch Solutions has rimfire baby. Yeah. <laughs> they shot a lot of rimfire. I let them shoot as much rimfire as they wanted to. Uh, they did shoot my 1022 with the Grey Birch Solutions. I tricked out everything barrel, uh, receiver, etc. And uh yeah. So the guy that was shooting that says, Can you send me all, uh, everything, all the parts? And I said, sure, no problem. Anyways, so it wasn't his standard. Ruger 1022, he said. And I said, no, it's not. Um, well, that's a, that's a, that's another thing. Like cartridge doesn't necessarily mean much. You could take a uh, your Wrangler out. You could take a, a 1911 22 out. You could take your 1022 out. Those three guns are all still just using 22, and yeah. they get to experience different ways of firing, but you're still using the cheap ammo, right? Correct. And which I did. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah. So going back to my original question. Are you going to charge? What do I do? She asked, how much is it going to cost? And normally I don't charge. Uh, I guess it depends who it is. If it's an acquaintance that I've never met, I might, I might charge for the ammo cost, cost on the ammo. Right. Yeah. Um, and just say like, Hey, this is cost. If you were to go out and buy this right now, it would cost more because I buy in bulk. I get like fantastic deals. Um, I am doing you a favor by letting you shoot all this ammo and not charging you for like the wear and tear on guns and that kind of thing. If you were to go to a, a range that does rentals, you would be paying uh, five times nose. five times more than this probably, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I've, I, sometimes people like pitch in if because uh, I've, I've taken a couple people where I've taken like I've taken them once and then I take them again and they're like, oh, look, can I throw some money at you for for ammo? And, you know, donations are accepted. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if they're going to throw me a few bucks, that's uh, that's fine. But largely, I try to limit uh, limit the scope and price. How many guns do you do you bring out if you bring a new group out to the range? Uh, typically, I'll bring out anywhere from five to seven pistols. I'll bring out two shotguns, four rifles. I thought you were going to say five to seven total, but that's way more than five to seven total. <laughs> that must be that, that must be either a really long range day or uh, they just shoot one mag of each kind of a thing and then move on. Kind so of thing, right? it's three or four hours, mm-hmm. which is long for somebody who's never shot before. But it's yeah. also I give them the opportunity of trying every single one of them and then going back to mm-hmm. their favorite or, you know, their second favorite and trying those out as well. 
Yeah, I usually do like a 22 pistol, nine millimeter pistol. Um, I, if I had a revolver, that would be cool to like like a, a 38 or, or something like that. That would be yeah. to bring out. But I hate them so much. I just I don't really have one on hand. Um, and the Wrangler is just like begrudgingly there because it's cheap and it, and it looks cool. <laughs> That's why it's there. I said, there you go. You get to shoot. You get to shoot a revolver. Now let's go play with the real guns. Wasn't that frustrating? Yeah, make make them load it too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. and unload it. Oh man, <laughs> that'll take them some time. Do you do you typically get them to load mags, or do you do it yourself? Uh, depends on the person. So if mm-hmm. somebody actually has some prior experience, I'll get them to do it, and I'll uh, like um. So uh, the first couple, I did everything for them. The second couple that came out. Uh, what I did was I loaded the first ones because I wanted to see how they handle it. So the magazines specifically, I'd put one in and I'd get them to shoot it. And then I'd give them uh, 10 or five rounds and then 10 and uh, see how they did. And then afterwards, when we went back to choose whatever firearm they wanted to shoot, then I made them load the magazines or prep the magazines or mm-hmm. insert cartridges. And then, um, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? So, uh, just because they were they're proficient at it and mm-hmm. and that as well, so it's giving them the giving them um, a little bit of instruction on how to do it. The bullet points that way, and <laughs> that, it sounds funny, but it actually had to be explained. So how it gets inserted into the uh, magazine. So yeah, you need to show them and and technique. You need to show them how to how to load it, right? Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. exactly. And then uh, I probably could have. Uh, could have uh, sold a couple of speed loaders that day too just because it's so much easier yeah uh i mean with the ruger 1022 mags they those are easy enough to load with like pistol mags yeah uh, there's there's technique to this kind of stuff right a lot of people just don't yeah. know how to like put the enough pressure down to get the bullets in and uh and move on from there yep so yeah. um brandon says start with the semis start with a gsg 15 then uh ppc uh followed by the 180s the more interesting options yeah it's kind of like what we did yeah mm-hmm. always start with a lower caliber um and then move up and you'd be surprised especially especially with women people are thinking that you know what they're not going to like the bigger guns they actually do but they mm-hmm. Quite frankly, you have to start with a, a smaller caliber and work the way up. But yeah, and some, yeah. and then they know. Oh, okay, that's that's what's going on there. Some yeah. people like the recall. They're like, okay, that was nope, I'm good. <laughs> that's that's one is enough. Uh, with yeah. with pistols, like with center fire pistols, some people get that. Um, and then with uh, like a larger center fire rifle, same thing with a three yeah. weight or, or above. Some people will I take the like, time. Oh, that's enough. I take the time and uh, give them proper position proper stance proper grip proper mm-hmm. everything beforehand and i walk them through it and just from the fact i say okay pick it up make sure that you you know i give them make sure you're able to feel uh the pistol or the rifle or whatever it is to mm-hmm. get a feel for it first and then uh, yeah proper positioning stance everything grip and then that way they're less likely to get that recoil or afraid of that recoil or whatever. So, and you know, uh, one thing I used to do when, when I had people gather at my place and then uh, just kind of head out to the range in, in one vehicle, uh, if I had some time is I would set up like a dry fire area. Yeah. I would get one of those nine, those laser bullets, pop it in a nine millimeter and get people to show me uh, uh, shooting with that because sometimes their side alignment's not correct. And it's kind of frustrating to try to describe that on the range where they've like, they've got the blade way up or they've got it in the base of the notch and they're not hitting what they're, what they're aiming at. And, or they're like, they're striking the ground or something like that. Right. So like yeah. as, as a safety thing, uh, that laser thing. So nice. So nice yeah. to be able to see for, for a lot of people are like, Oh, that's where it hits. Oh, it's not hitting like way above that. It's hitting yeah. right on the tip of that thing. Ah, got it. Got it. Got and it, so. it's good that you mentioned that. Cause that's one of the things that I mentioned, I talk about side alignment and ex- exactly what it is. Cause a lot of people don't know you're going, mm-hmm. okay. Cause people assume people know, no, they're brand new. They don't know what they're supposed to do. So t- tell them how to do sight alignment so that they can actually hit the target. Yeah. By the way, the lady that I had, so the couple that was uh, my friend, Wyatt and his girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Anyways, Emily shot better than Wyatt. Probably took instruction better. 
<laughs> Guys have this idea that we can like just innately like, oh, we play video games and stuff like that. So we can shoot, we can shoot a rifle. That's what my nephew but was Riot, Riot was a really good shooter too. He had a little oh, bit of a flinch, mm-hmm. which we went through the exercise on it, but um, Emily didn't. Did you do ball and dummy with brand new shooters? Yeah, a little bit. Oh. He's... <laughs> it's good. It's good. I love doing ball and dummy because I've I've seen it a couple of I saw it at the range the other day. Uh a guy was like, Oh man, this is this I don't really like this pistol. And I'm like, what's happening? He's like, it's not accurate. Like, I don't like I just I'd rather shoot a rifle. I'm like, let me show you something. Uh I think it's anticipation. I'll I'll, I'll prove it to you. Did the ball and dummy drill and uh yeah, and it's like he was like <laughs> like, see that? And he's like, oh, that's really embarrassing. I'm like, no, no, don't be embarrassed. Like, this happens to everyone. Everyone yeah. does this. And, uh, you know, it's just something you got to fight. And, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it's it's always impressive, like, when they expect it to be a click and it's a bang and they drill whatever they're aiming at. It's like, oh, oh I get the it. The sights are working just <laughs> fine. It's me. Okay it's it's it, i don't know I, I i it's it's one of those like epiphanies that uh that you see in people that that's like really rewarding like uh uh well in maple seed um for a lot of people the npoa you do the npoa and you're like got this like uh for myself i didn't feel like that was a, a huge breakthrough but but some of the other things were and for some people at maple seed the npoa is the biggest breakthrough and they they do it and all of a sudden it's like their groups just like yeah. shrink and uh yeah, it's a uh, uh, this huge epiphany for people, and it's uh, it's it's really cool to see. Yeah, when people when it yeah when it all makes sense to people, it's kind of that, those light bulb moments. I did the so I demonstrated MPOA on the weekend, mm-hmm. and uh, and all I hear from the back was oh my because I'm doing the so for those of you who haven't uh, done the program, we we demonstrate with a laser um, natural point of aim, and we demonstrate muscling and recoil and. And uh, all kinds of things like that. So, um, anyways, so I was doing the uh, the muscling, and uh, so uh, I think it was Patrick. Patrick, he's watching. He did the MPOA um, uh, point of instruction, and so he carded the sights while I was muscling, and then uh, I went back to my natural point of aim, right back on, and everybody's in the background going, "Holy shit! Oh my god! It's like..." <laughs> Oh, I get it now. This How is why this happen? makes sense. Why? She... Anyways, it makes yeah. sense. Anyways. Yeah, it's a good Epiphany. demonstration, and uh, it's it's impressive. I, anyways, yeah. So the ball and dummy thing is uh, uh, is really good. I, I, I guess that's really great because you are putting that person on on the right path uh, to mm-hmm. shooting handguns. And uh, if you don't give them that point of instruction early, uh, they might. They might put a thousand rounds downrange before figuring out that uh, they're they're flinching terribly, right? Yeah, yeah. So we're kind of talking about all the things that you can do to make a, a shooter's day better, basically, if you take them to the range. So, and then also your day is better by them, you know, popping up some mm-hmm. ammo, money for ammo as well. But <laughs> washing hands know. at the end of the day and having a couple snacks. Yeah, I typically say if I'm doing this, I typically bring water and a couple of snacks. I Mm -hmm. also bring, um, I make sure that they clean their hands and remind them to clean their hands. Mm -hmm. Like we'll go sit out and I said, okay, there's a bathroom over there. Go wash your hands before you eat anything or anything. So, but I tell them also to eat before they come to the range and make sure that they have water with them too. And then I also supply it because I'm not counting on them to bring the stuff. Yeah. Well, and, and for washing your hands and that kind of thing, it's just important to have lots of water and be able to you have a bathroom at your range. I don't have a bathroom at my range. You got to bring, you got to bring water and soap to, uh, to scrub that stuff off, especially if they've been loading like 22 ammo and yeah. their like fingertips are all leady. That's the fingertips they're going to use to, to eat whatever snacks you brought. And I just yeah. usually bring like some junk food, some hot rods or a bag of chips or something like that. And after three or four hours, it's a nice thing on the way home to drive and uh, eat some snacks and, uh, and talk about typically questions then are about, uh, um, licensing and about uh what are what's legal what's not legal why is that illegal well it's stupid okay and and uh, getting getting through some of that stuff so that hopefully they can get you can encourage them to get their pal right yeah that's exactly it kind of what we want to do we bring people to the range so that they will join our community mm-hmm. see how fun it hopefully. is hopefully 
Or yeah. at the least, oh, I see the allure. Mm-hmm. I get why these guys like this. I don't want to do it myself, but uh, I can see why they like it. And I, I don't want to take that away from them. Yeah, exactly. Because I want to keep my guns. Oh, speaking of which. Oh, anyways, Ontario. Ontario's election oh, is coming up. We news. didn't put it in the news. I didn't news. put it in the news because I thought it was not applicable since they're not going to win anyways. But uh, the Ontario liberals said they're they're going to ban handguns. Although they, they kind of said it in a way that um, is beyond what what uh, like the, the, the federal liberals gave as as scope. Yeah. Yeah. I think you you'd mentioned. Well, do you want to cover this? Yeah, the, this is Ontario. The only reason I, I even heard it of it was uh, Toronto's the center of the universe and uh, <laughs> handguns were getting banned there. So I assume that this would mean no crime uh, the week after. Uh, no more Correct. gang bangers or murders or anything like that with handguns. Right. Hmm. Mm, mm, no i was promised by <laughs> politicians yeah because <laughs> if you're a criminal and you use a gun in a criminal way that's already banned i don't know if they know that well a lot of like and and the, one of the cool things about um everything being online now is that the cops typically will take pictures of the guns that were um seized and then put it online and you look at them you're like that's a shorty Glock. Those were never legal in Canada. That's a prohib for sure. That's a okay. smuggled, a smuggled prohib. Um, so the nice thing there is you're able to like, if it gets posted on Reddit or something like that, you can say it's a smuggled gun. And people yeah. will be like, oh, how do you know? Well, because that's the only thing it could prohib. be. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But people don't know that. People just think that banning guns is a good thing because it means that it's not going to be crime. But they don't actually want to take the time to really think about it and analyze what's going on. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's not going to happen. But I do know if the liberals get in, guess what? Federally or provincially? Provincially for Ontario. Yeah, they're going to ban your handguns. Yeah, they will. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, besides that. Uh, I don't know. I don't follow Ontario okay. politics. Last so. time, the our Ontario um, power rates went through the roof because we were paying it off. Because anyways. Mm. Yeah. It's happening here in Alberta, actually. Not with really? liberals. We've never had those. But the, when the <laughs> NDP, uh, the NDP took, took power, they uh, they shut down a bunch of the uh, coal power plants and got natural gas going. And uh, yeah, that sent our rates up quite a bit as well. Skyrocketing. Well, yeah. when uh, the liberals said that they were going to ban guns, then the NDP came up and said, us too. <laughs> It's a good thing. Like I, um, I, I don't follow again on Ontario, Ontario's provincial politics at all. But uh, if those two parties like um, had a coalition, you'd be screwed because they have the vast majority. The Conservatives only win because uh, NDP and Liberals vote split in uh, in Ontario. Mm. It's like in Alberta. The only the only way the Conservatives lose is if they vote split with an even further right party. Uh, and uh, we won't talk about that. <laughs> As long as that doesn't happen, it, I can't imagine. There's a lot of polling that shows like the NDP would win if, if there was a vote right now, but I think it's just bad polling. Hooey? Yeah. Yeah, Ooh-y. for Alberta, I think it's just hooey. Okay. Yeah. Well, we got off topic, but we, we forgot oh, yeah. about it. We're talking about the other. Well, this is a conversation you might have well, uh, on, the, on, the dra- on the drive home. <laughs> well, during the range trip, this is, you know. You did talk you politics have during the range trip? Hell Yeah. Well, I'm talking about like aim and trying to aim for this thing over there. Well, no, after. And... Did you really have a good time today? Yes. You want to go get your Powell, you know, come out and have some fun? Yes. Okay. You want to own a handgun? You want to own don't, a handgun? Don't, don't buy liberal. <laughs> don't next, vote liberal. Next election. Hey, <laughs> make sure you vote so that you can actually continue to do this and other people can as well. But at least they're being more informed. So that's mm-hmm. the conversation that we have. Yeah. Yeah. That would make Anyways. sense. Yeah. So my uh, takeaway from this is, yeah, I'll go back to them and maybe I'll say, you know what? Co- let's cover the cost of the uh, the ammo. Because uh, you're gonna you're gonna drive out. There's gonna be gas. There's uh, gas costs. There's gonna be wear and tear on your vehicle, on your guns. Uh, there's gonna be the cost to replenish the ammo, which at this point is gonna be higher than your initial cost you paid correct. for that ammo whenever you bought it. So five hundred dollars then. <laughs> That would that would be a full featured day, I think. Yeah. Five hundred dollars worth of ammo. That's a lot of ammo. Yeah. No. Anyways, yep. and the range is only five minutes from my house. But besides that, oh, so jealous. So I know, jealous. Right? Uh, okay. 
Okay, but uh, the other thing is, uh, the other takeaway is everybody that's listening or uh, is watching, go and take a new shooter to the range. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. All right. Okay. That was a good main topic. Now that I can answer that, I feel good about it. A little bit anyways. Okay. Uh, why don't we get into listener feedback? Listener feedback is sponsored by Army DC Gunsmith. It's a full service gunsmith who specializes in firearms refinishing. He offers hot bluing, parkerizing, cerakot finishes, as well as wood refinishing. Check out his online inventory of new and used guns, firearms, accessories, and optics, and more at uh, dcgunsmith.ca. Also, you can uh, check him out on Facebook at uh, and also on the Instagrams as well. And go over and say hi to Denny for us. By the way. Check out it. He has some really good uh, sales on every once in a while as well. And I'm watching you type. And anyways, oh. did, did I? Did you lose your train of thought? Yeah, because I'm so watching you. Station. Doug was just mentioning uh, if you're covering the Ontario handgun ban, that uh, make sure to brag about the Alberta CFO um, complaining Basically. to the feds about uh, the OIC and the fact it will do nothing. And that is yeah. something that happened. The Alberta CFO sent a uh, a letter in um, to. Was it to Marco uh, complaining about uh, the fact yeah. that the OIC won't have any impact on uh, on anything that they wanted to have impact on? Exactly. He was out at the border the other day practicing being a border guard. He says if uh, politics don't work out, maybe he can fall back on that. I think. Ooh, he Marco Blair. Yeah, yeah. Marco. Yeah, yeah. Public safety. Was and he my boss ever a cop? No, he's a politician. No, he's a politician. Blair was a cop. Yeah, Mark, very good Marco good doesn't strike me as a <laughs> as someone who could. Uh, He's a lifetime politician. Uh, wrestle someone to the ground and uh, stop them from bringing handguns into the country. <laughs> He's letting every. I must admit, he is going. Okay, come on in. Come on in. All right. Yeah. What do you mean? You're not an illegal alien. What is that? What is it? It's uh What was the term that they used a couple of years ago about people crossing the border illegally? Undocumented. No, Asylum it wasn't a seeker. No, it was a weird, weird way of undocumented things. migrant. No, jeez. Okay, know. I'll have to figure it out. I'll cut, I'll remember it in my when I'm sleeping in the middle of the night, and I'll, mm-hmm. I'll text you at about three a.m. Okay. Uh, irreg isn't it irregular? Irregular <sighs> is what D- Doug's saying. New liberal voter says <laughs> Gray Birch. Well. Uh, maybe, but like a, a hey, lot it is of, a new uh, liberal voter, and you're actually correct about that. By the way, a lot of a lot of migrants come from much more conservative areas where they have like very different uh, societal views than uh, uh, than progressive Canada does. Yeah, but once they come into Canada and they get, uh, you know, they have the resources, uh, and they have the resources, and the government's letting. Anyways, they are the new liberal voters. Just saying, they are. They've come from a very conservative uh, country. A lot of yeah, never mind. I'm going to stop country. digging, ho- digging deeper. They got stupid. Is that, the, is that this phrase? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to just shut up. So that means we're getting into our emails. So Adriel, read the email, please, while I close the door because it's cool. Hey there. Uh, in the last couple of episodes, Adriel has mentioned a stop the bleed course. I've been trying to find one in Saskatchewan. Haven't really had much luck finding one. Can you share more about the course you took and where I should be looking? So uh, stop the bleed is um, I think they made it so that it was like so easy to administer and do everywhere. It's not really as centrally administered as some of some other courses would be or essentially certified as some other courses would be. Um, so I went to like stoptheBleed.ca and I didn't really see like a, a section for uh, instructors or anything like that on there or a, a listing of courses. They do have a contact us form that you can fill out that maybe that you could ask them, um, hey, what uh, what instructors are there in uh, in Saskatchewan? I Googled around a little bit and I found a couple of places that offer Stop the Bleed. One of them was uh, Hutt's uh, Safety Training uh, that was in... I can't remember which city in Saskatchewan. I'm going to pretend Saskatchewan is one place. Uh, Big that, that city. Was, <laughs> there was that place. Regina, um, there, Saskatoon. Those are the yeah. only two really big cities. Yeah. Well, then you have Estevan and Carlisle and Maidstone. And now these are all small places. But those are awesome. um, there's a cash training uh, that uh, that offered it. And then there was the stop the bleed.ca. So I emailed this to Drew and just uh, just let him know that, uh, uh, to, to, to reach out because... Um, 
yeah, there isn't really a central place to do it. Um, every time I've um, registered for it, it's been because I've been in the know because someone's putting it on for something yep. and I say, yes, hook me up because yeah. uh, I like training. Like any kind of training that I can get it, get my hands on and stop the bleed is, uh, is very good training. Yeah. Check out the local hospitals as well. Some of them mm-hmm. here in, in Ontario offer it as well, believe it or not. I think like one of the things that you might want to consider is find your local, whoever does your local WMIS and TDG and that kind of stuff and say, you should have Stop the Bleed. And it probably wouldn't take much for them to get it because no, the, yeah. it's a, it's another course that they can offer. And uh, it's probably a feeder course because it's so quick to do. It would probably get people in who are interested in doing training and therefore would probably help that training center get like other, oh, uh, while you're here, why don't you get your first aid? Why don't you get your WMIS, your TDG, your like all these other uh uh, certifications for work or for personal life that uh, that are handy. Awesome. Go and check that out. All right. Uh, th- I think there's one more down here. I think it was down from this. Give me a second. Scrolling down. There's there a you Facebook go. Thing. There's a Facebook one. I'll read mm-hmm. it. Dear Kelly and Adriel and Mo and Half, I recently got one of those ridiculous short 410 revolver shotguns. It was really fun and ridiculous at the same time. Kelly, you should get one. <gasps> Uh, I say that because it's very hard to find 410 shells anywhere right now. I remember yeah. when you got your 28 gauge skeet gun and how you can find shells uh, too easily. But uh, it's uh, I've been seeing some seeing every store now has 28 gauge in abundance. It's not, I haven't not, seen that. <laughs> it's, it's if I go to, to Cabela's, find. there will be none. There will be no 28 gauge and maybe a box or two of 410. Yeah, well, actually, the last time I went, there was no twenty gauge uh, target either. There is no twenty gauge here in Ontario at all. Yeah, it's yeah, weird. And that's that's wild because that's right next to twelve gauge in terms of popularity. Yeah. So maybe if you get a four ten, it will become available again. I like the logic in that. I love the show. I usually listen uh, to it when I'm target shooting or on uh, on one of my long drives from home from a road job keep up the great uh content okay keep up the lengthy content i don't know if we can promise great but lengthy mm. yeah lengthy it is that isn't it okay anyways no, we're just going for an hour today it's not that yeah, bad that's a short one if you would like to contact us you can do it through several means but we'd like to hear from you either on slam radio at gmail.com or you can facebook messenger us send us something on instagram or even just try, join us live and uh comment in the comment field like doug did and we'll we'll put it up mm-hmm. as well okay uh patreonies we don't have any new patreon uh supporters but if you would like to become one go on over to patreon.com at slam sorry patreon.com slash fire radio and you can help support the show we can get out content and upgrade the servers like we did this week didn't we or we paid for our server uh we like renewed hosting so that and that helps with uh getting our show out because uh anyone who's a podcast subscriber you're actually downloading that from slamfire radio.com correct or you're downloading it from a service that got it from slamfire radio.com correct mm-hmm. so thanks for doing that thanks for supporting us uh shout outs adriel uh yeah shout outs to everyone giving me these great uh great suggestions on instagram and that kind of thing on uh, on what to do next with my gun room because um i don't have it figured out like even this panel wall i was like i had some really bad ideas about what i was going to put up there and uh, and a buddy of mine suggested the the slat wall and uh it looks good well mm-hmm. i don't think the white looks good i'll have to paint that but i think i actually overall, like, like the white yeah yeah i do hmm. it does have like a does have like a, a very different I like how it like I like the layout of it wh- like where it sits on the wall compared to like the guns below I like that um for my shorty 2022s I'm going to get like something to to jack them up a bit so that they hit that thing but uh yeah anyways uh thank you very much for the suggestions and uh I'll continue employing them the next thing I'm going to get is uh puzzle pieces hopefully something like uh obscenely like kid oriented like if it has like uh <laughs> like letters in it and that kind of a thing. And it's like really Sesame built for Street like a, and... like a, like a discount childcare kind of a, kind of setup. Like I'll, 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 I'll try to find something like that. Okay. Yeah. You're going to have to take a, like a aerial photo of your room after that. I have some other webcams coming. Uh, so I'm going to have a multiple webcam set up very shortly here. Awesome. Okay. I'd like to give a shout out to all of the instructors who came out uh, before both days. It was a long weekend of 
uh, shootings. So I know that a couple of them were tired on Monday. So uh, they did a fantastic job, not only with the instruction, but also with keeping everybody safe. And thank you to the participants who came to who made it such a great day, too. So I just want to give a shout out to all of you. Um, yeah. Anyways, that's it for today. So let's sign off. Let's go over to Gunners Canada. Check us out there. You can uh, comment on our thread at the we'll- that's there as well give us a like on facebook uh go and give us a review on facebook too if you want to anyways facebook's the thing uh join the ccfr and guess what we'll see y'all next week night everybody Later. so if you have any comments or questions for the show please send an email to slamfireradio at gmail.com now go grab a gun and shoot something when the talking is over Time to get a gun